Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay and welcome to Inside the Hem, where we dive into all things sewing with style and budget in mind. This month I'm bringing you 30 days of festive fashion sewing, where each day I'm sharing a new garment sewing project idea to inspire your holiday wardrobe. No matter your personal style, join me as we add a touch of handmade magic to this season's celebrations. Let's dive into today's festive project, a glamorous capelet. Many of us have plenty of dresses in our closets that could work for a holiday party, but just aren't dressy enough. The last thing you want to do is show up and feel underdressed. In my opinion, I would much rather be overdressed than underdressed any day. So for this capelet, instead of going the traditional outerwear route, I wanted to give you an idea of how to make something that you can wear with the dresses that you already have that will add just enough glitz and glamour that it can dress up any dress that you already have hanging in your closet. For my ready to wear inspiration, I kept seeing these beaded and sequin mesh capelets and boleros. While they are stunning, they are very difficult to recreate at home and they can be expensive to make. So I was feeling hopeless and almost bailed on this idea until I found today's inspo, which I ended up falling in love with. Here is what I found. All right, so here is today's inspiration. It's the Unreal Faux Fur Feather Nope, <laughs> the Unreal Fur Faux Feather Cape Bon. Wow, that's hard to say. This is from Anthropology. It is a whopping $309. This is it over, by the way, a bias cut dress. This is literally stunning. Um, getting a little wedding, so maybe change up the colors, but this would be a beautiful holiday outfit just as it is. Um, you can see the closures here have buttons up the back. You know how I feel about buttons up the back. We already talked about this, so we will not be doing that. We will be doing something different. But you can also get a good idea of the fabric here. So we have like a mesh situation. They're saying it's, I mean, I guess it's little feathers. Like each one of these white things is a feather. I never found this exact fabric anyways. So we're we're just being inspired by this one. I wanted to give you guys an idea of the shape and of the kind of coverage that you would get. Um, and then we're gonna kind of put our own spin on it. The Cape Bon by Unreal Fur. Oh, it's the Unreal Fur, comma, faux leather, comma, Cape Bon. <laughs> okay. Um, the Cape Bon by Unreal Fur is a timeless accessory crafted from bespoke feather-like fabric. So bespoke, it means like one of a kind. So like they made this for them. So there wouldn't be, we would never be able to find it. It's like one of a kind. Uh, maybe that's why it's $309. That's starting to make a little bit more sense. Featuring a high collar and button closure along the back, making it a versatile addition that enhances the silhouette of any evening dress or bridal gown. Polyester mesh, faux feathers, semi-sheer fabric, full shoulder and neck coverage, upper arm length, button back, professionally clean and imported. Okay. The other option that I found is a little simpler. It is this one from Batsheva. It's their Synergy Cape in black lace. Okay, obviously this is in SFW. If I didn't say so already, I apologize but we would be wearing clothes under ours, okay? Uh, this is a $225 little cape. I love the idea of having a little pearl right here. Um, just really cute and sweet, especially when you have clothes on underneath it. <laughs> um, but it's a simple, simple lace, right? Oh, that's actually like a little rhinestone, so even cuter, I guess. But a pearl would work too. A pearl button would be also really sweet. Here we go. Now we put it on over some clothes. Thank you for that. Okay, the Synergy Cape is a fall winter 24 runway favorite. So it's like hot off the runway. Made in black lace with black braided trim and a rhinestone button closure. Hook and eye closures down the front if you want to wear it closed as a blouse or layer it over just about anything. Polyester, dry clean only, made in New York, one size. Great, so let's zoom in on this, just the one. Okay, thank you. And yes, okay. 
So you can see we have the black lace and then the edges are literally just trimmed with this braided trim. We've seen that a million places, right? The collar looks like it just has some black, maybe sew in interfacing in it, but then we just have a loop and then this rhinestone button. And then the same trim is what is trimming the entire lower half of the cape as well. All right. This is not rocket science. You guys do not overthink this. Okay. All right. So for the patterns, don't be mad, but I narrowed it down to four patterns. <laughs> and I did that because I wasn't sure if you guys would want to line this one. I don't think this version is lined, but I also don't know how comfortable this fabric that we would use for this is going to be on the inside. So I picked some lined ones and then I also picked some unlined ones. So that's kind of why I have so many. So kind of just pick your poison, but we're going to talk about fabric options for each one as well. So the first one is Vogue 2078. It is a lined dart fitted bolero, has elbow length balloon sleeves with stay. That's this big one here, which I adore. Um, lined capes have hook and eye closure. Cape B has stand up collar. So here are the line drawings on these. Um, this one looks the most like the black lace one. You would just leave the lining off and um, do your binding all the way around. And that's it. This one could be an option too. I didn't find a ready to wear option that reminded me of this, but I mean that in a black satin of some kind thrown over your black dress would be really a statement. Um, and then this one is just a collarless version. It's kind of my least favorite of the three. There's this one, Vintage Vogue 1964. Um, definitely vintage. This is the one that I was going to suggest velvet fabric for. It's a little bit more structured. Um, it does have the buttons going up the front and then it has darts in the back. Um, so you could make this one out of a more structured fabric. If you made, for example, that brocade dress um, and, and you didn't want to do the car coat, you could do this instead of that in the matching brocade. Um, but they are recommending chambray, cotton broadcloth, crepe, fail crepe, gingham, linen, shantung, and sarah. Those all seem kind of summery fabrics. I think because the dress is more summery, but what I'm picturing is definitely a little bit more structured and hefty. Um, I picked a Berta pattern. I rarely dabble into Berta, but I did pick this one because this one has these versions. It also has this version here, which is similar to the, to this one, to the vintage one. Um, maybe just not as refined. I don't know. Yeah, it's just very, very plain. This is it right here. Uh, but it also had this one and I did not hate this. You know, it's, it's a chopped off sweater. Okay. Let's be real. But if you're into the cozy vibe, right? Like if your personal style is more comfy, cozy, grab one of these, make it out of a knit fabric that has a little bit of shine, a little bit of sparkle in it. Um, and you can dress up just even like a plain jeans and t-shirt outfit. You know what I mean? And then the real winner here, I think, is Vogue um, 9276. This is from their accessories collection. Um, it's shrugs and capelets. All the sizes are in one, smile, small to extra large. This is what they look like. So they're different than the inspirations that um, I showed you, but similar enough. Um, this one acts a little bit more as like a cardigan, but it has a full sleeve with a cuff. So if you wanted to cover your entire arm, you could do that. This one just has a little hook and eye right here, but it's meant to be sheer with that trimming, just like this one. And then we have this guy here that's trimmed in bias binding, probably. That's more like your traditional shrug. And then this little wrap one, I don't know how much sewing is involved in this, um, but you could definitely get a fabric similar to this one and make this design from it and get something similar, but they're all going to give you just that extra layer that you need or that you would want to go over your existing plain, boring dresses that you wear to the office every single week. Um, this would jazz it up some. So you can see they use some really cool, I don't even know what this is, something on mesh. 
bias binding here out of some kind of satin. That's really elegant, right? And then we have this sheer version, again, on some kind of mesh fabric. This has a dolman sleeve and, again, bias binding, um, finishing all the edges. Um, and then here's the wrap one. I mean, that's really fun, right? I mean, obviously, we this wouldn't happen. But, um, but yeah, you could do something really cool. I even think that they just bought the pink sash and then they made their own feather fabric. So very, very similar to how this one was made bespoke. Um, this might even be a bespoke version as well. So you could get some kind of fabric and adorn it however you want. Um, so yeah, so those are four options for just another layer to add on top of something you already own at home. All right, fabric wise, I did find a couple of fabrics as well, depending on your style. So first up was to lean into the lace, um, similar to this one. Okay, this is a much plainer lace. You might even be able to find this kind of lace like out of Joanne. Um, but I wanted to find something a little bit fun. So this one is beaded 3D, meaning it like has actual texture to it. Floral lace fabric embroidered on 100% polyester net mesh. It is $45, but I don't think you need that much. They have a ton of colors. You can see the netting here. All of this has these little pearls on it, right? Wouldn't that be really, really sweet? And then you wouldn't have to do much. That's obviously a different color, but you wouldn't have to do much to the ends to treat them. You could even imagine if you just cut the mesh away down here and use that as a raw edge. You could do that at the neckline and at the hemline. That would be really beautiful as well. And the sewing would be minimal. You'd have like your shoulder seams and that's it. You could also do these dolman ones and just leave the hems raw like they did here right or just leave them like just cut them cut back the mesh so that's that idea then I also thought of this black faux feather chevron on chiffon fabric I thought this one was really chic and elegant especially considering it's coming from our friends at Joanne so this is $12 a yard not sp expensive at all you'd have to order it online but I think that that could be really cool in any of these sheer versions, like literally any of them. Even this one, it could be really cool in that too. Then from Zaloof, I found this is a velvet that has sequin strips added to it. Um, Adeline pleated velvet with sequins, it's called. It also comes in a, a few other colors if you didn't want to do black. Um, that is like a bronzy type of color that's pretty. Here's something that's like champagne. And then here's navy, navy on navy. Um, but yeah, so that one would be really fun. And maybe you would want to line that one. I don't know what the under part of this is like. If it's like regular velvet, then it's probably very smooth and comfortable and you don't need to line it. Um, but yeah, that one was really fun. They're $26 a yard. And then finally, I found black metallic faux ostrich feather lace fabric, which I thought was the most similar to this. It is from Fashion Fabrics, $31 uh, per yard, and it comes in all of these fab, all these colors. So whatever outfit you're pulling from your closet, let's say it's purple. Well, we've got a purple one to match. Um, so lots and lots of colors, lots of options here. I think this one would be so fun. It'd have like natural movement. You could use that on any of these. This one, like our inspo right? You could even turn this around, turn this one around, and then you'd have this look where the back is in the front and the front is in the back. You, so yeah, you could do that with that one as well. Thanks for joining me for today's festive project. I hope recreating this capelet sparks an inspiration for your holiday sewing. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow's project where we will be cre recreating a pussy bow blouse that you are going to love. I can't wait to see you back here for more 30 Days of Festive Fashion. Happy sewing!